Hello bunnies. Hi guys. So I am a writer. If you don't know, right now I ghostwrite um, men's dating profiles as well as their uh, messaging. I'm a messaging um, and dating ghostwriter. Um, and then I also do editing. I edit resumes. I edit all sorts of things. Um, and I do copy editing and copywriting. Um, and then my, you know, my primary love is uh, screenwriting and fiction writing. And I am almost done with my first novella. Um, I'm three drafts in. Um, so I'm getting to the stage where I'm going to have like beta readers and stuff. Um, and so one thing I think isn't talked about enough is realistic violence and what calls us to action in within violence. Um, I've read lots of unrealistic uh, violent scenes and seen them as well and that's something that I wanted to avoid so I just came upon this book called um, violence a writer's guide it's by Rory Miller um, and Rory just a little background on him he's a 17 year correctional officer sergeant um, of corrections emergency response unit handgun training unit martial but he has a be black belt in jujitsu um, a psych degree he created and taught classes on survival skills and he now writes nonfiction and um, fiction as well um, and so Violence a Writer's Guide, it, it kind of shook me. Guys, it shook me um, on a personal level and for, for writing as well. Particularly because of what he has designated as a violent scale. And it's something that I've intuitively known for years about violence. Um, and so this is kind of like the rundown of it. So he puts people in categories. So when it comes to conflict... On one side of this scale or spectrum, you have nice people who, you know, in quotes nice, you know, they're manipulative, um, they engage in passive aggressiveness, um, and then a little further to the right, you'll have people who are assertive, you know, people who, you know, speak their mind and let people know when boundaries are being crossed, but they do it in a diplomatic way. And then after that, you have people who are aggressive. Um, so people who may or may not uh, assert themselves in a diplomatic way, but they're damn sure asserting themselves. Um, it can be bombastic. It can be in your face. It could you, utilize, you know, tools from lower down on the scale. And then you have violent people. Um, so violent people. So when there's conflict, they're not going to mince words. You know, they like to get to the action. You feel me? Um, and then on the very end, he had like, I think, murderous or people that like murder, which he had so many interesting things to say about this too, because he said that, you know, when you're the higher you up on the scale, looking down at the way other people will um, handle conflicts, it starts to look petty. And it's like, if you're dealing, whether you work in a violent environment, um, you engage with violence, um, or because of your, the nature of your job, if you're in the military or, you know, um, law enforcement or whatever, um, you may have taken lives before. You, um, you, it's kind of a transcendent different way of viewing violence and viewing the way normal people or like civvies, like civilians will approach conflict. And then it becomes really funny because there's so, such a large percentage of the population that is conflict avoidant, which is so interesting to me because how many times do you read like how many stories how many movies how many everything is it just seems like people are just like so cool with violence and they're so um adept and astute like you know they have you know arms training and all this other stuff when it, it there are several disciplines and skill sets and mindsets you need to be good at um dealing with conflict in a in a violent or aggressive way um and a lot of it comes from being the type of person that doesn't use force excess, uh, excessively um, that will make you more of a master of it instead of it, it being a master of you. So um, the the best part that I liked about his talk about the violence scale, and the book covers like so many different things, but I just found this super interesting, um, 
is that he says that people stay pretty much in their lane unless they are called to action to go up higher in the scale. So for example, if you're way on the left, which if you're just this nice person, you engage in manipulation and passive aggressive tactics to get what you want, right? Because that's essentially what violence is about. Um, and I also like that he defined manipulation and passive aggressiveness passive aggressiveness as an act of violence because it is an act of violence and I'm sure everyone listening to this everyone has encountered being used or uh you know dealing with someone who's passive aggressive that did something so that they can get you to do what they want and that's the same thing with aggression that's the same thing with being assertive and the same thing with being violent and or murderous but what I found so interesting was that he said that it takes tremendous force tremendous pressure, tremendous strife to move someone up in the scale. Um, because on average, people will stay in their lane for the rest of their life. They'll be the passive aggressive granny, you know, or the assertive granny, or the aggressive granny, or whatever it may be. Um, so in the more steps you go in the right direction, um, the more pressure has to be on you, like defending a loved one, sometimes not even defending yourself, but defending a loved one or defending an ideal. If we look into history and um, people that have acted in violent ways to um, protect liberty and freedom and, or to um, fight against oppressiveness or what have you, um, people who naturally maybe they're just assertive in their everyday life and now they're violent. So they skipped being aggressive and they went to violent and the amount of energy that takes and just the mindset and uh, physical shifts it takes to progress in the scale. Um, so if I had to place myself somewhere, I would say that I'm sort of on average. When it comes to like work and that sort of thing, I try to be a little bit more passive aggressive because um, a, pe a lot of people don't like assertiveness, you know, and, and the higher up you go, the more negative reactions you're going to get. If you're passive aggressive or just manipulative, you're able to fly under the radar. If you're assertive, you may kind of fly under the radar, but you might kind of be on people's radar. Um, if you're aggressive, oh, you're on radars. People are talking about you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, of course, if you are violent or murderous, yeah, people might be looking for you now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, people will be looking for you. So, you know, there's so much risk it takes with with each um, step on the scale. Um, but... The higher you go, each one, the faster you'll get, you know, or either end the conflict or get the person to do what you want. So obviously, if you kill someone, um, whatever issue was there, at least that issue is not there anymore. You know, it's just critically speaking. Um, and, and with violence, you know, I think many people have seen times where having a physical fight will squash a beef, you know, where people are like, all right, we're over that, you know, sometimes it will ignite it too. But, you know, whatever the issue is being insulted or whatever it is, that gets stopped the moment, you know, hands are flying, you know what I mean? Um, and everything down the face, you see people in each other's face and things get really aggressive. And it's funny because in girl world, especially the scale is even more interesting to look at and to dissect because for most women, we stay between manipulative, passive aggressiveness to possibly aggression. Um, but we tend not to, like if you meet a woman that's aggressive, um, the impact of what she does and how she moves is, is always over-exaggerated because we're not used to that from women. Um, and it's of a detriment to us as women because it makes us less prepared to be able to defend ourselves because we're not comfortable in the space of assertiveness or in the face of aggression or in definitely when it comes to violence. Like we don't get that training. We don't get that comfortability. And um, it makes us pretty much marks um, for people that are higher up on the scale to, you know, hurt us, you know. So I find that super, super interesting and super worth noting both in, you know, the writing practice and really thinking about borders. If you're going to get the passive aggressive girl to kill someone, oh, you got to make the stakes super high, super high. Not even that she's defending her life. Like she's defending the life of like her mom and sister that like, you know, gave up everything for her or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, and even then it is a tremendous uh, leap to get someone so far down on the spectrum to get to the opposite end. 
And it's your duty and job as a writer to create those stakes and to create those risks and to be realistic about it. Because realistically, the first time you have a fight, uh, well, for one thing, fights are very short. But in addition to that, if you're not used to fighting, if you don't have any skill, it, it's likely you're going to get hurt and messed up. And of course, yeah, there's tons of writers that get it right. Um, but I think it's something that's really worth saying because I find people using violence in their writing work as like, um, you know, like in general, violence is in a, in, in a toolbox. Uh, it's a sledgehammer. You know what I mean? It's a chainsaw. You know, when in reality, most people handle their conflicts in a passive aggressive, assertive or aggressive state. That is the way the majority of society moves because aggressiveness but particularly violence and murder gets you in jail get you locked up get you in big trouble so most civvies most civilians use manipulation passive aggressiveness assertiveness and aggression and aggression gets a big no-no um especially if you're a woman especially if you're a woman of color if you're a man of color as well and um all these things need to be taken into consideration if you are going to write about a person moving up or down the scale um, so the person that is a contract killer, he may be a little bad at being passive aggressive, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe he doesn't naturally just work that way. So it's confusing to him and you have to, you know, exhibit and show that clunkiness in your writing. So I just found that super interesting and I'm going to link his book below. Um, and, um, I definitely want to give it another reread cause I want to add it to my commonplace book. Um, any questions about that or your views on violence or have you changed in your life? Were you someone that was passive aggressive and now you're super aggressive? Or you were, were you someone that's violent and then you went to anger management and now you're just assertive? Um, I would love to hear from you and um, I will catch you in the next video. All right. Talk to you later, bunnies.